If you really want to improve your court vision and take it to an elite level, Milos Teodosic may be the guy to watch. Obviously, you got plenty of hoopers who you can study, but he's definitely up there for my number one choice to study. And this is most impressive because number one, he's not the most explosive player, so he's mostly relying on patterns, reading the game, timing, rather than just getting to the bucket and dishing from there. And he's also doing this in Europe in the FIBA game, where the game is way less predictable than the NBA. Where a lot of these passes, you gotta have crazy awareness, they happen in a split second, and he's still able to deliver them. So I'm gonna test you guys first. I'm gonna stop a play, ask you where you think the ball is going, then show the rest of the play, you'll get your answer, and you'll also be able to understand why he actually made that pass. Then I'll do a little breakdown on his passing, then come back to the testing and see if you guys learned anything. Hopefully you guys enjoy this video. Let's get to it. All right, first one. Who do you think he's diamond this suit? So this is a good example of passing up an open pass for a better one. He's got two real options right here. And this player looks most open, but he's also stationary. And this defender is going to have some momentum to get a hand in or block him. Whereas this pass leads him to an easy dunk with momentum. Good pass for a better one. Alright, next one here. So in this one, he's reading momentum. This pass doesn't look crazy open, but this defender is moving this way away from him. So it's actually more open than it looks. Alright, number three. And this one again, he's not open just yet, but he does see the defender who's even and he has his head turned. Making this an easy decision for him. All right, four out of five right here. On this one, he avoids not passing it too early to this teammate, but as soon as he sees him put his foot into the ground to cut back, he starts delivering that pass. All right, last one here, easy one. I'm lying, this is an easy one. This is actually a trick one that most of us probably would never guess. I honestly still don't know how in the world he delivered this pass, but it does show you how aware he is of all of his teammates at all times. All right, now, like I said, I gotta break some of this down. So I think one thing to understand that may be actually most important is he's not just looking for the open pass. He's not just searching out open teammates and then making that decision, reacting. No, he's trying to play a step or two ahead of the game. And this is something I've talked about in other videos, but I think he does this better than almost anyone. So first off, he's monitoring momentum. Like here, the roll man is open, but that defender's momentum is at a high speed towards him and actually away from his man. So this is probably actually the better pass. So I think it's important to understand that number one, when we do take snapshots like we did in that quiz, we don't get a full picture of the momentum. And this is what we have to be monitoring in games. A player could look like they're defending and while their man still may be close to them, they're sprinting away from them. So their momentum's moving away. This is actually a good pass. Just something to be conscious of. Even in transition, he's not necessarily looking for the open player, but even just a turned head. So he sees the back of this player's head, so he knows he's not looking towards him. Obviously, he has tabs on his teammate, but it's going to be tough to get to it if he drops a dime on a bounce pass here. Because a lot of the time, that teammate may not look open, but if you give him the right pass, you can lead them into an open space. And the defender's not going to get to it because they're not looking. Also watch the timing here. It's never too early just because he quote unquote sees somebody open. Again, a lot of the time a player may look open, but it's still not the right time. So a lot of time actually delaying it or waiting a moment or two does one of two things. Number one, it lets the play develop. So a player may get deeper into a cut, get more open. Maybe you get a little bit deeper into the paint, that defender steps up a little bit more, and now you have an even more open pass. And then number two, it gives you a more realistic window to get that pass off. Sometimes we see an open man and we pass it quickly, and the defender just deflects it. Sometimes we gotta see the game ahead of time, then take that half second to actually create a window for ourselves to drop that pass off. This is similar to how he'll literally slow down in transition, because he knows he has a teammate filling in a lane. So rather than always pushing as hard as he possibly can, he waits for that to happen and then drops it off. Also notice his use of bounce passes. A couple really, really valuable reasons here. Number one, it's easier for big men to handle. Big pause there, but let's keep going. We all know the feeling of throwing a super short pass to a big. We put too much speed on it, they drop it even when they're wide open. And honestly, that's probably our fault. So making that bounce pass, allowing some more time for them to adjust and catch that ball, is actually probably a good decision. It also gives us more room for error. When we make a bounce pass, they have a little bit more time to read where it's going. And again, it's not as direct. And then it's also out of harm's way most times. We can literally make a bounce pass through the defense, but if we're being real, most players, especially at this level when they're a little bit taller, aren't going to be able to reach down for that ball as it's hitting the ground in a split second. Just not happening. So if you can get really accurate and quick with these bounce passes, it's going to help you reach these open teammates a lot more. 
Also, the power of leading people is really on display with Tia Dosage. He's delivering it to them right in stride, or even passing it before they're open and leading them into open space. If any of these are slightly behind, they're probably gonna get deflected. So this takes a lot of experience just understanding the speed and the direction that your teammate's going, and then being able to meet them perfectly like this. But it's very worth working on. Also, watch how he goes up in the air to pass on some of these too. It's not that he's going up without an idea of where to go, but rather using it as a tool to get defenders out of position and even in the air with him. Then from there, it's a lot easier to deliver this pass and actually opens up teammates a lot. So whether this is on a jumper or a layup, this can be a really good tool if you know where you're going. I love these wraparound passes too, mainly because instead of putting it in front of a defender, if you can deliver these accurately, it's going behind their back, which is impossible to stop. Plus it allows them to get super close to that defender without losing it or getting it deflected, which gives more time for that play to develop. And this wind up pass too, where he's almost throwing it. For longer passes, this really helps us zip it in there, get some speed on that ball, and make sure it gets to our teammate. Plus it's pretty easy to be right off that dribble. If we make one of these pocket dribbles or dribble outside of our frame, we're already kind of winded up and now we can really deliver that ball with some speed. All right, so now that we've covered some of these concepts, let's go back to another test and see how you guys improved. All right, on this one, like I mentioned at the beginning, it's tough because we can't really get a picture for their momentum. But if you go back and look, both teammates are kind of open. It could go either way, but that defender's momentum is definitely going out towards that corner. So it's an easy decision here. So in this one, his teammate isn't really open yet, but he doesn't really have anyone defending him, if that makes sense. But I think Tia Dosic sees this now, and he's ready to lead him into that open space like we talked about. So like we talked about, this teammate looks really far back, but Tia Dosic actually slows down to let him fill in. So easy dump off pass. Remember the timing we discussed? He could have made this pass here, but he knows that that would be tough as his big man's rotating. He would catch it and then have to turn and dribble from there. So he takes the dribble out, creates a better window for himself here, and then leads him into space in a much easier position for that big. So hopefully you guys are able to walk away from this video with a little bit understanding of how the game works, of patterns that happen, and most importantly, how to deliver the ball to your teammates through these patterns. I think if you guys continue to break down the game like this and study these patterns in terms of your court vision, you're going to see some big improvements. As always, thank you guys for tuning in. Make sure to follow me on Instagram at By Any Means Basketball. Tap into our virtual academy training if you're interested in training with me year round and continue to be a student of the game. Until next time.